Yunnan, Yunnan is a province of China. Located in southwest China, the province spans approximately 394,000 square kilometers (152,000 square miles) and has a population of 47.368 million as of 2015. The capital of the province is Kunming, formerly also known as Yunnan. The province borders the Chinese provinces Guangxi, Guizhou, Sichuan, and the Tibet Autonomous Region, as well as the countries Vietnam, Laos, and Myanmar. Yunnan is situated in a mountainous area, with high elevations in the northwest and low elevations in the southeast. Most of the population lives in the eastern part of the province. In the west, the altitude can vary from the mountain peaks to river valleys by as much as 3,000 meters feet. Yunnan is rich in natural resources and has the largest diversity of plant life in China. Of the approximately 30,000 species of higher plants in China, Yunnan has perhaps 17,000 or more. Yunnan's reserves of aluminium, lead, zinc and tin are the largest in China, and there are also major reserves of copper and nickel. The Han Empire first recorded diplomatic relations with the province at the end of the 2nd century BC. It became the seat of a Sino-Tibetan-speaking kingdom of Nanzhao in the 8th century AD. Nanzhao was multi-ethnic, but the elite most likely spoke a northern dialect of Yi. The Mongols conquered the region in the 13th century, followed by the Ming dynasty. From the Yuan dynasty onward, the area was part of a central government-sponsored population movement towards the southwestern frontier, with two major waves of migrants arriving from Han-majority areas in northern and southeast China. As with other parts of China's southwest, Japanese occupation in the north during World War II forced another migration of Han people into the region. These two waves of migration contributed to Yunnan being one of the most ethnically diverse provinces of China, with ethnic minorities accounting for about 34% of its total population. Major ethnic groups include Yi, Bai, Hani, Zhuang, Dai and Miao. History Topic. Prehistory The Yuanmu Man, a Homo erectus fossil unearthed by railway engineers in the 1960s, has been determined to be the oldest known hominid fossil in China. By the Neolithic period, there were human settlements in the area of Lake Dian. These people used stone tools and constructed simple wooden structures. Pre-Nanzhao period Around the 3rd century BC, the central area of Yunnan around present-day Kunming was known as Dian. The Chu general Zhuang Qiao Zhuangju entered the region from the upper Yangtze River and set himself up as «King of Dian». He and his followers brought into Yunnan an influx of Chinese influence, the start of a long history of migration and cultural expansion. In 221 BC, Qin Shi Huang unified China and extended his authority south. Commanderies and counties were established in Yunnan. An existing road in Sichuan, the Five Foot Way, was extended south to around present day Kujing, in eastern Yunnan. The Han Dian Wars began under Emperor Wu. He dispatched a series of military campaigns against the Dian during the southward expansion of the Han Dynasty. In 109 BC, Emperor Wu sent General Guo Chang, Guo Chang south to Yunnan, establishing Yaizhou Commandery and 24 subordinate counties. The commandery seat was at Dianchi County in present-day Jining. Another county was called Yunnan, probably the first use of the name. To expand the burgeoning trade with Burma and India, Emperor Wu also sent Tang Meng to maintain and expand the five-foot way, renaming it. Southwest Barbarian Way, Xinan Yidao. By this time, agricultural technology in Yunnan had improved markedly. The local people used bronze tools, plows, and kept a variety of livestock, including cattle, horses, sheep, goats, pigs, and dogs. 
Anthropologists have determined that these people were related to the people now known as the Thai. They lived in tribal congregations, sometimes led by exiled Chinese. During the Three Kingdoms, the territory of present-day Yunnan, western Gaizhou and southern Sichuan was collectively called Nanjong. The dissolution of Chinese central authority led to increased autonomy for Yunnan and more power for the local tribal structures. In AD 225, the famed statesman Zhu Liang led three columns into Yunnan to pacify the tribes. His seven captures of Meng Huo, a local magnate, is much celebrated in Chinese folklore. International trade flowed by Din of Yunnan. In the 4th century, northern China was largely overrun by nomadic tribes from the north. In the 320s, the Kuan, Kuan clan migrated into Yunnan. Kuan Chen, Kuan Chen named himself king and held authority from Lake Dian, then known as Kunchuan. Henceforth the Kuan clan ruled eastern Yunnan for over 400 years. <inaudible> Nanzhao period Before the rise and dominance of the Nanzhao kingdom around Yunnan in the 8th century, many local tribes, clans, and other groups sprang up. Around Lake Erhai, Namely, the Dali area, there emerged six Zhao, Mengzi, Mengui Yuxi, Yuexi Langqiong, Langqiong Dengden, Tangdan Shiling, Shilang and Mengxia. Mengxia Zhao, Zhao was an indigenous non-Chinese language term meaning «king» or «kingdom». Among the six regimes Mengxia was located south of the other five, therefore given the new, larger context, it was called Nanzhao Southern Kingdom. .By the 730s Nanzhao had succeeded in bringing the Erhai Lake area under its authority. In 738, the western Yunnan was united by Piluoj, the fourth king of Nanzhao, who was confirmed by the imperial court of the Tang dynasty as king of Yunnan. Ruling from Dali, the thirteen kings of Nanzhao ruled over more than two centuries and played a part in the dynamic relationship between China and Tibet as a buffer state. By the 750s, Nanzhao had conquered Yunnan and became a potential rival to Tang China. The following period saw several conflicts between Tang China and Nanzhao. In 750, Nanzhao attacked and captured Yaozhou, the largest Tang settlement in Yunnan. In 751, Zhan Yu Zhongtong, Xi'an Yu Zhongtong, the regional commander of Jianan, present-day Sichuan, led a Tang campaign against Nanzhao. The king of Nanzhao, Geluafeng, regarded the previous incident as a personal affair and wrote to Zhan Yu to seek peace. However, Zhan Yu Zhongtong detained the Nanzhao envoys and turned down the appeal. Confronted with Tang armies, Nanzhao immediately turned its allegiance to the Tibetan Empire. The Tubo and Nanzhao agreed to be fraternal states. Geluafeng was given the title Zanpajong, younger brother. The Nanzhao Tubo alliance ensured a disastrous defeat for Zhan Yu's expedition, with the Tang general's army of 80,000 men being reduced to a quarter of its original size. Tang China did not give up after one failure. In 753, another expedition was prepared, but this was also defeated by Nanzhao. In 754, the Tang organized an army of more than 100,000 troops that advanced to the Dali Plain, resulting in only another slaughter. By the end of the 8th century, Tang was no longer a major threat to Nanzhao. Nanzhao's expansion lasted for several decades. In 829, Nanzhao suddenly plundered Sichuan and entered Chengdu. When it retreated, hundreds of Sichuan people, including skilled artisans, were taken to Yunnan. In 832, the Nanzhao army captured the capital of the Pyu Kingdom in modern Upper Burma. Nanzhao also attacked the Khmer peoples of Zhenla. Generally speaking, Nanzhao was then the most powerful kingdom in mainland Southeast Asia, and played an extremely active role in multi-state interactions. In 859, Nanzhao captured Bojo, and this event exacerbated the Nanzhao Tang clashes. When the Tang governor of Annam took Bojo back in the following year, Nanzhao, with the help of native peoples, occupied Hanoi as the Tang army moved to Bojo. 
When the Tang forces returned, Nanzhao troops retreated from Hanoi but attacked and plundered Yongzhao. In the winter of 862, Nanzhao, allying with local groups, led an army of over 50,000 men to invade Annam again. It is reported that the Tang forces lost over 150,000 soldiers either killed or captured by Nanzhao in the two Annam battles, the autumn of 866 saw Tang victory in Hanoi and soon all of the Nanzhao forces were driven away. But Tang China had lost its ability to attack Nanzhao. While Nanzhao was being defeated in Annam, it still occasionally attacked Sichuan. In 869, Shilong, Shilong the Eighth King and the First Empire of Nanzhao, invaded Sichuan. In 874, Nanzhao attacked Sichuan again. In 902, Zhang Meizi, the King Pingguan, King Pingguan Prime Minister of Nanzhao, murdered the infant king of Nanzhao, and established a short-lived regime, namely, Da Changhe. Nanzhao, a once powerful empire, disappeared. <laughs> Dali Kingdom In 937, Duan Siping overthrew the Nanzhao and established the Kingdom of Dali. The kingdom was conquered by the Mongol Empire in 1253 after Dali King Duan Xingzhi defected to the Mongols. The Duans incorporated into the Mongol dominion as Maharajas of the new province. The Mongolian prince sent to administer the region with them was killed. In 1273, Kublai Khan reformed the province and appointed the Semuran Syed Adjil as its governor. The Yunnan province during the Yuan dynasty included significant portions of Upper Burma after the Burmese campaigns in the 1270s and 1280s. But with the fall of the Yuan dynasty in 1368, the Ming dynasty destroyed the Yuan loyalists led by Basalawami in the Ming conquest of Yunnan by the early 1380s. Topic. Ming and Qing dynasties The Ming installed Mu Ying and his family as hereditary aristocrats in Yunnan. During the Ming and Qing dynasties, large areas of Yunnan were administered under the native chieftain system. Under the Qing dynasty a war with Burma also occurred in the 1760s due to the attempted consolidation of borderlands under local chiefs by both China and Burma, Yunnan was a destination for Han Chinese during Yuan rule. Colonizers moved into the area during Ming and Qing rule. During the Ming dynasty, three million Han Chinese, mostly from Nanjing, before the original Nanjing population was largely replaced by Wu speakers, and some from Shanxi and Hebei, settled in Yunnan. Although largely forgotten, the Bloody Panthe Rebellion of the Muslim Hui people and other local minorities against the Manchu rulers of the Qing dynasty caused the deaths of up to a million people in Yunnan. The Manchu official Shukingar started an anti-Muslim massacre which led to the Panthe Rebellion. Shukingar developed a deep hatred of Muslims after an incident where he was stripped naked and nearly lynched by a mob of Muslims. He ordered several Muslim rebels to be slow sliced to death. Tariq Ali wrote about the real incident in one of his novels, claiming the Muslims who had nearly lynched Shukingar were not Hui Muslims but belonged to another ethnicity but nevertheless the Manchu official blamed all Muslims for the incident. A British officer testified that the Muslims did not rebel for religious reasons and that the Chinese were tolerant of different religions and were unlikely to have caused the revolt by interfering with the practicing of Islam. Loyalist Muslim forces helped King crush the rebel Muslims. The King armies only massacred Muslims who had rebelled or supported the rebels and spared Muslims who took no part in the uprising. In 1894, George Ernest Morrison, an Australian correspondent for The Times, travelled from Beijing to British occupied Burma via Yunnan. His book, An Australian in China, details his experiences. The 1905 Tibetan Rebellion in which Tibetan Buddhist Lamas attacked and killed French Catholic missionaries spread to Yunnan. Post-imperial 
Yunnan was transformed by the events of Second Sino-Japanese War, which caused many East Coast refugees and industrial establishments to relocate to the province. It assumed strategic significance, particularly as the Burma Road from Lashio, in Burma to Kunming was a fought over supply line of vital importance to China's war effort. University faculty and students in the East had originally decamped to Changsha, capital of Hunan. But as the Japanese forces were gaining more territory, they eventually bombed Changsha in February 1938. The 800 faculty and students who were left had to flee and made the 1,000-mile journey to Kunming, capital of Yunnan in China's mountainous southwest. It was here that the National Southwest Associated University commonly known as Leander University was established. For eight years, staff, professors and students had to survive and operate in makeshift quarters that were subject to sporadic bombing campaigns by the Japanese. There were dire shortages of food, equipment, books, clothing and other essential needs, but they managed to conduct the running of a modern university. Over those eight years of war 1937 to 1945, Leander became famous nationwide for having and producing many, if not most, of China's most prominent academics, scholars, scientists and intellectuals. Both of China's only Nobel laureates in physics studied at Leander in Kunming. Topic: Naturalists. Thousands of plant, insect, and mammal species were described in the 19th century by scientists of the French National Museum of Natural History, Paris, in connection with permanent settlements of missionaries of the Missions Étrangers de Paris in northwest Yunnan, among them notably Jean André Souilly and Felix Beat. From 1916 to 1917, Roy Chapman Andrews and Yvette Barup Andrews led the Asiatic Zoological Expedition of the American Museum of Natural History through much of western and southern Yunnan, as well as other provinces of China. The book, Camps and Trails in China, records their experiences. Other notable explorers include Heinrich Hundel Mazetti, George Forrest, Joseph Francis Charles Rock, who from 1922 to 1949 spent most of his time studying the flora, peoples and languages of southwest China, mainly in Yunnan, and Peter Gullet, a white Russian who studied Nashi culture and lived in Lijiang from 1940 to 1949. Geography Yunnan is the most southwestern province in China, with the Tropic of Cancer running through its southern part. The province has an area of 394,100 square kilometers, 152,200 square miles, 4.1% of the nation's total. The northern part of the province forms part of the Yunnan Gaijou Plateau. The province borders Guangxi and Gaijou in the east, Sichuan in the north, and the Tibet Autonomous Region in the northwest. It shares a border of 4060 kilometers, 2520 miles with Myanmar, Kachin and Shan states in the west, Lao, Luang Namtha, Udomse, and Phongsali provinces in the south and Vietnam, Ha Giang, Lao Cai, Lai Chau, and Dien Bien provinces in the southeast. For practical purposes, all of Yunnan province falls within the Zomia region of Asia. Topic: <inaudible> Geology. <inaudible> Yunnan is at the far eastern edge of the Himalayan uplift and was pushed up in the Pleistocene, primarily in the Middle Pleistocene, although the uplift continues into the present. The eastern part of the province is a limestone plateau with karst topography and unnavigable rivers flowing through deep mountain gorges. The main surface formations of the plateau are the lower Permian Malku formation, characterized by thick limestone deposits, the lower Permian Kixia formation, characterized by dolomitic limestones and dolomites, the upper Permian basalts of the Ermatian formation, formerly Ermatian plateau basalts, and the red sandstones, mudstones, siltstones, and conglomerates of the Mesozoic Paleogene, including the Lufeng formation and the Lunan group, Lumeri, Shouten, and Kajiakon formations. 
In this area is the noted stone forest or shillin, eroded vertical pinnacles of limestone formation. In the eastern part the rivers generally run eastwards. The western half is characterized by mountain ranges and rivers running north and south. Paleontology <inaudible> 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 Yunnanozoan, Lower Cambrian possible core date Jingshanosaurus, Early Jurassic Long Neck Prosauropod Dinosaur Climate Yunnan has a generally mild climate with pleasant and fair weather because of the province's location on south-facing mountain slopes, receiving the influence of both the Pacific and Indian Oceans, and although the growing period is long, the rugged terrain provides little arable land. See agriculture in Yunnan. Under the Köppen climate classification, much of the province lies within the subtropical highland or humid subtropical zone with mild to warm winters, and tempered summers, except in the almost tropical to truly tropical south, where temperatures regularly exceed 30 degrees Celsius in the warmer half of the year. In general, January average temperatures range from 8 to 17 degrees Celsius (46 to 63 degrees Fahrenheit). July averages vary from 21 to 27 degrees Celsius (70 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit). Average annual rainfall ranges from 600 to 2300 mm (24 to 91 in), with over half the rain occurring between June and August. The plateau region has moderate temperatures. The Western Canyon region is hot at the valley bottoms, but there are freezing winds at the mountaintops. Topography The terrain is largely mountainous, especially in the north and west. A series of high mountain chains spreads across the province. There is a distinct canyon region to the west and a plateau region to the east. Yunnan's major rivers flow through the deep valleys between the mountains. The average elevation is 1,980 meters (6,500 feet). The mountains are highest in the north, where they reach more than 5,000 meters (16,000 feet). In the south, they rise no higher than 3,000 meters (9,800 feet). The highest point in the north is the Kawajbo Peak in Dakin County on the Dikking Plateau, which is about 6,740 meters (22,110 feet), and the lowest is in the Red River Valley in Heku County, near the Vietnamese border, with an elevation of 76.4 meters (251 feet). The eastern half of the province is a limestone plateau with karst scenery and unnavigable rivers flowing through deep mountain gorges. The western half is characterized by mountain ranges and rivers running north and south. These include the Nujiang, Tai, Salween, and the Langkangjiang, Tai, Mekong. The rugged vertical terrain produces a wide range of flora and fauna, and the province has been called a natural zoological and botanical garden. Topic. Borders Bordering Chinese provincial level divisions are Tibet, Sichuan, Gaizhou, and Guangxi. Starting from the east and working clockwise, bordering countries are Vietnam, Ha Giang, Lao Cai, Lai Chao, and Dien Bien provinces, Lao, Fongzali, Udomze, and Luang Namtha provinces, Myanmar, states of Shan and Kachin. The main border crossings are Heku Lao Cai, by road and rail, is the only Sino-Vietnamese land border crossing open to non-Chinese, non-Vietnamese. Sino Laotian at Botan Ruli Muse is the only Sino-Burmese border crossing open to non-Chinese, non-Burmese. Lakes <laughs> 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 There are several major lakes in Yunnan. The province has nine lakes with areas of over 30 square kilometers, 12 square miles. They include Dianchi Lake near Kunming, Fujian Lake in Yushi, the second deepest lake in China, 
Xingyan Lake, directly south of Fujian Lake and connected with it by a short river. Kilu Lake, south of Fujian and Xingyan Lakes, separated from them by mountains, in Tonghai County. Erhai Lake, near Dali City. Lagu Lake, in Ningling near the border with Sichuan. Yangzong Lake, in Yaliang County. Yalong Lake. Topic: Rivers. Yunnan is the source of two rivers, the Xi River, they're known as the Nanpan and Hongshui, and the Yuan River. The Hongshui is a principal source stream of the Xi River. Rising as the Nanpan in eastern Yunnan province, it flows south and east to form part of the boundary between Guizhou Province and Guangxi Autonomous Region. Flowing for 345 kilometers (214 miles), it unites with the Yu River at Gaiping to form what eventually becomes the Xi River. The province is drained by six major river systems. The Yangtze River, here known as the Jinsha Jiang River of Golden Sands, drains the province's north. The Pearl River, with its source near Kujing, collects the waters from the east. The Mekong Lanking, which flows from Tibet into the South China Sea forming the boundaries between Laos and Burma, between Laos and Thailand and through Laos, Cambodia and Vietnam. The Red River Yuan or Honga has its source in the mountains south of Dali and enters the South China Sea through Hanoi, Vietnam. The Salween Nujang, which flows into the Gulf of Martaban and the Andaman Sea through Burma. The Irrawaddy, which arises from the confluence of two rivers in Kachin State in Burma, has a few small tributaries in Yunnan's far west, such as the Jilongzhang and Taiping River, and rivers in the prefecture of Dihong. Biodiversity <inaudible> 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 Yunnan is China's most diverse province, biologically as well as culturally. The province contains snow-capped mountains and true tropical environments, thus supporting an unusually full spectrum of species and vegetation types. The Yunnan camellia, camellia reticulata, is the provincial emblem. During summer, the Great Plateau of Tibet acts as a barrier to monsoon winds, trapping moisture in the province. This gives the alpine flora in particular what one source has called a lushness found nowhere else. This topographic range combined with a tropical moisture sustains extremely high biodiversity and high degrees of endemism, probably the richest botanically in the world's temperate regions. Perhaps 17,000 species of higher plants, of which an estimated 2,500 are endemic, can be found in the province. The province is said to have as much flowering plant diversity as the rest of the Northern Hemisphere put together. Yunnan has less than 4% of the land of China, yet the province harbors around 42.6% of all protected planet species and 72.5% of all protected wild animals in the county, of which 15% are strictly endemic to Yunnan. Yunnan is home to, most notably, the Southeast Asian gaua, a giant forest-dwelling bovine, the Indo-Chinese tiger and the Asian elephant. Other extremely rare species are the Yunnan box turtle and the Yunnan snub-nosed monkey. It is feared that the Yunnan la gibbon, another moribund species, has already gone extinct. The freshwater fish fauna is highly diverse with about 620 species, including more than 580 natives, the remaining are introduced. This equals almost 40% of the freshwater fish species in China. Of the Yunnan natives, more than 250 are endemic to the province and many of these are threatened. Several species that are restricted to single lakes, notably Dian, Erhai, Fujian and Yalong, are likely already are extinct. By far, the most diverse order in Yunnan are Cypriniforms, both in total species number and number of endemics. Topic. Designation Yunnan has been designated a Center of Plant Diversity, IUCN, WWF, Davis et al., 1995. 
Global 200 List Priority Ecoregion for Biodiversity Conservation WWF, Olson and Dinerstein 1998. Endemic Bird Area. Birdlife International, Bibi, C. et al. 1992 and Global Biodiversity Hotspot. As a part of the Hengduan Mountain Ecosystem Conservation International, Mittermeier and Mittermeier 1997. Topic: Natural resources. A main source of wealth lies in its vast mineral resources. Indeed, mining is the leading industry in Yunnan. Yunnan has proven deposits of 86 kinds of minerals in 2,700 places. Some 13% of the proved deposits of minerals are the largest of their kind in China, and two-thirds of the deposits are among the largest of their kind in the Yangtze River Valley and in South China. Yunnan ranks first in the country in deposits of zinc, lead, tin, cadmium, indium, thallium and crocidolite. Other deposits include iron, coal, copper, gold, mercury, silver, antimony and sulfur. More than 150 kinds of minerals have been discovered in the province. The potential value of the proven deposits in Yunnan is 3 trillion yuan, 40% of which come from fuel minerals, 7.3% from metallic minerals and 52.7% from non-metallic minerals. Yunnan has sufficient rainfall and many rivers and lakes. The annual water flow originating in the province is 200 cubic kilometers, three times that of the Yellow River. The rivers flowing into the province from outside add 160 cubic kilometers, which means there are more than 10,000 cubic meters of water for each person in the province. This is four times the average in the country. The rich water resources offer abundant hydro energy. China is constructing a series of dams on the Mekong to develop it as a waterway and source of power. The first was completed at Manwen in 1993. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Drought. After 4 years of drought in the fall of 2012, winter of 2012-13 and spring of 2013, severe drought was reported which affected flow of springs and the level of spring-fed lakes. Agriculture and urban water supplies were also affected. Water levels in Yulong Lake dropped and grass was reported growing in the middle of the lake bed. Topic Scenic areas Topic National Parks Padakuo National Park, opened in two thousand and seven, in Shangri La County, Lao Junshan National Park, Lao Junshan Guo Jia Gong Yuan in Lijiang, pending approval. Topic UNESCO World Heritage Sites Old Town of Lijiang, accepted in 1997 as a cultural site Three parallel rivers of Yunnan protected areas, accepted in 2003 as a natural site South China Cast, accepted in 2007 as a natural site Cultural landscape of Honga Hani rice terraces, accepted in 2013 as a cultural site. Topic: Governance. Topic: Administrative divisions. Yunnan consists of 16 prefecture-level divisions, 8 prefecture-level cities and 8 autonomous prefectures The 16 prefecture-level divisions of Yunnan are subdivided into 129 county-level divisions 16 districts, 15 county-level cities, 69 counties, and 29 autonomous counties. At the end of the year 2017, the total population is 48.01 million. One. Topic: <inaudible> Urban areas.
Topic: Politics. Secretaries of the CPC Yunnan Committee, the Secretary of the CPC is the highest ranking and most important position in Yunnan. Song Renkiong, Song Renkiong 1950-1952 Xie Fuji, Xie Fuji July 1952-August 1959 Yan Hongyan, Yan Hong Yan August 1959-January 1967 Zhou Xing, Zhou Xing June 1971 to October 1975. Jia Qiyun, Jia Qiyun October 1975 to February 1977. And Pingsheng, and Pingsheng February 1977 to July 1985. Pu Chaoshu, Pu Chaoshu July 1985 to June 1995. Gaoyan, Gaoyan, June 1995 to August 1997. Linghuan, Linghuan, August 1997 to October 2001. Bienpei, Bienpei, October 2001 to August 2011. King Guangrong, King Guangrong, August 2011 to October 2014. Li Jiheng, Li Jiheng, October 2014 to August 2016. Chen Hao, Chen Hao, August 2016. Incumbent governors of Yunnan. The governor is the second highest office in Yunnan after the secretary of the CPC Yunnan Committee. The governor, who is elected by the Yunnan Provincial People's Congress, is responsible for all economic, environmental, political, personnel, and foreign affairs issues concerning Yunnan. Chen Geng, Chen Geng, March 1950 to February 1955. Guo Yingqiu, Guo Yingqiu, February 1955 to November 1958. Ding Yechuan, Ding Yishuan, November 1958 to January 1965. Zhou Xing, Zhou Xing, January 1965-1966. Tanfuren, Tanfuren, August 1968 to October 1970. Zhou Xing, October 1970 to October 1975. Jia Qiyun, Jia Qiyun, October 1975 to February 1977. And Pingsheng, and Pingsheng, February 1977 to December 1979. Lu Minghui, Lu Minghui, December 1979 to April 1983. Pu Chaoshu, Pu Chaoshu, April 1983 to August 1985. Pijikiang, Pijikiang, August 1985 to January 1998. Li Jiating, Li Jiating, January 1998 to June 2001. Zhu Rongkai, Zhu Rongkai, June 2001 to November 2006. King Guangrong, King Guangrong, January 2007 to August 2011. Li Jiheng, Li Jiheng, August 2011 to October 2014. Chen Hao, Chen Hao, October 2014 incumbent. Topic: Demographics. Topic. Ethnicity Yunnan is noted for a very high level of ethnic diversity. It has the highest number of ethnic groups among the provinces and autonomous regions in China. Among the country's 56 recognized ethnic groups, 25 are found in Yunnan. Some 38% of the province population are members of ethnic minorities, including the Yi, Bai, Hani, Tai, Dai, Miao, Lisu, Hui, Lahu, Wa, Naki, Yao, Tibetans, Jingpo, Blang, Pumi, Nu, Akang, Jinuo, Mongols, Durung, Manchus, Sui, and Baiyi. Several other groups are represented, but they live neither in compact settlements nor do they reach the required threshold of 5,000 to be awarded the official status of being present in the province. 
Some groups, such as the Mosuo, who are officially recognized as part of the Nashi, have in the past claimed official status as a national minority, and are now recognized with the status of Mosuo people. Ethnic groups are widely distributed in the province. Some 25 minorities live in compact communities, each of which has a population of more than 5,000. Ten ethnic minorities living in border areas and river valleys include the Hui, Manchus, Bai, Nashi, Mongols, Zhuang, Dai, Akang, Bai and Shui, with a combined population of 4.5 million. Those in low mountainous areas are the Hani, Yao, Lahu, Va, Jingpo, Blang and Jino, with a combined population of 5 million, and those in high mountainous areas are Miao, Lisu, Tibetan, Pumi and Drung, with a total population of 4 million. Topic. Languages Most dialects of the Chinese language spoken in Yunnan belong to the southwestern subdivision of the Mandarin group, and are therefore very similar to the dialects of neighboring Sichuan and Gaizhou provinces. Notable features found in many Yunnan dialects include the partial or complete loss of distinction between finals, n, and, as well as the lack of, y. In addition to the local dialects, most people also speak standard Chinese Putonghua, commonly called Mandarin, which is used in the media, by the government, and as the language of instruction in education. Yunnan's ethnic diversity is reflected in its linguistic diversity. Languages spoken in Yunnan include Tibeto-Burman languages such as Bai, Yi, Tibetan, Hani, Jingpo, Lisu, Lahu, Nashi, Thai languages like Zhuang, Buye, Dong, Shui, Tai Lu and Tai Nua, as well as Hmong Mean languages. The Nashi, in particular, use the Dongba script, which is the only pictographic writing system in use in the world today. The Dongba script was mainly used to provide the Dongba priests with instructions on how to carry out their rituals. Today, the Dongba script features more as a tourist attraction. Perhaps the best known Western Dongba scholar was Joseph Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Literacy By the end of 1998, among the province's population, 419,800 had received college education or above, 2.11 million, senior middle school education, 8.3 million, junior middle school education, 18.25 million, primary school education, and 8.25 million aged 15 or above, illiterate or semi-literate. Religion According to a demographic analysis of religions in Yunnan, as of 2005 the province has around 4 million believers of the five government-sanctioned organized religious doctrines of China, almost 90% of them belonging to the ethnic minorities. Of these, 2.6 million or about 6% of the total population are Buddhists, 620,000 or 1.4% are Muslims 530,000 or 1.2% are Protestants 240,000 or 0.5% are Taoists note that Taoist traditionally only defines priests 66,000 or 0.1% are Catholics, according to surveys conducted in 2004 and 2007. In those years, approximately 32.22% of the province's population was involved in worship of ancestors and 2.75% declared a Christian identity. Most of the population of the province practices traditional indigenous religions, including the Chinese folk religion among the Han Chinese, Baimoism among the Yi peoples, and Bensuism among the Bai people. The Dai people are one of the few ethnic minorities of China that traditionally follow the Theravada branch of Buddhism. Most of the Hui people of the region are Muslims. Christianity is dominant among the Lisu, the Jingpo and the Darung ethnic groups. <laughs> Agriculture The region maintains a strong agricultural focus. 
Agriculture is restricted to the few upland plains, open valleys, and terraced hillsides. Level land for agriculture is extremely scarce and only about 5% of the province is under cultivation. Rice is the main crop, corn, barley, wheat, rapeseed, sweet potatoes, soybeans as a food crop, tea, sugarcane, tobacco, and cotton are also grown. On the steep slopes in the west livestock is raised and timber, a valuable resource, is cut teak in the southwest. Yunnan produces most of coffee grown in China although there are also much smaller plantations in Fujian and Hainan. Large-scale coffee cultivation started in Yunnan in 1988. The most commonly grown variety in the province is Katimor. Tobacco is the main export product and makes up a big part of the provincial GDP. Furthermore, Yunnan has a strong competitive potential in the fruit and vegetable industries, especially in low-value added commodities such as fresh and dried vegetables and fresh apples. Yunnan is one of the regions in the world with the most abundant resources of wild edible mushrooms. In China, there are 938 kinds of edible mushrooms, and over 800 varieties can be found in Yunnan. In 2004, around 7,744 tons of wild edible mushrooms were exported, making up for 70% of the total export of this product in China. The so-called pine mushroom is the main product in Yunnan and is exported to Japan in large quantities. Due to China's growing consumption of dairy products, Yunnan's dairy industry is also developing very rapidly and is also aiming to export to its ASEAN neighbors. The flour industry in Yunnan province started to develop towards the end of the 1980s. Yunnan province accounts for 50% of China's total cut flour production. The size of the planting area for cut flowers in Yunnan province amounts to 4,000 hectares. In 2003, the output totaled 2.3 billion stems. In 2002 the flower industry in Yunnan had a total output of RMB 3.4 billion. Export amounted to $18 million. Apart from sales on the domestic market, Yunnan also exports to a number of foreign countries and regions such as Japan, Korea, Hong Kong, Thailand and Singapore. Economy. As of the mid-19th century, Yunnan exported birds, brass, tin, gemstones, musk, nuts, and peacock feathers mainly to stores in Guangzhou. They imported silk, wool, and cotton cloth, tobacco and books. Yunnan is one of China's relatively undeveloped provinces with more poverty-stricken counties than the other provinces. In 1994, about 7 million people lived below the poverty line of less than an annual average income of 300 yuan per capita. They were distributed in the province's 73 counties mainly and financially supported by the central government. With an input of 3.15 billion yuan in 2002, the absolutely poor rural population in the province has been reduced from 4.05 million in 2000 to 2.86 million. The Poverty Alleviation Plan includes five large projects aimed at improving infrastructure facilities. They involve planned attempts at soil improvement, water conservation, electric power, roads, and green belt building. Upon the completion of the projects, the province hopes this will alleviate the shortages of grain, water, electric power and roads. Yunnan lags behind the east coast of China in relation to socio-economic development. However, because of its geographic location the province has comparative advantages in regional and border trade with countries in Southeast Asia. The Lanking River, upper reaches of Mekong River is the waterway to Southeast Asia. In recent years land transportation has been improved to strengthen economic and trade cooperation among countries in the greater Mekong subregion. Yunnan's abundance in resources determines that the province's pillar industries are, agriculture, tobacco, mining, hydroelectric power, and tourism. In general, the province still depends on the natural resources. 
Secondary industry is currently the largest industrial tier in Yunnan, contributing more than 45% of GDP. Tertiary industry contributes 40% and agriculture 15%. Investment is the key driver of Yunnan's economic growth, especially in construction. The main challenge that Yunnan faces is its lack of major development. Its low productivity and competitiveness restrict the rapid development of the province. The province also faces great challenges in social issues such as environmental protection, poverty elimination, illegal migration, drug trafficking and HIV, AIDS. Yunnan's four pillar industries include tobacco, agriculture, biology, mining, and tourism. The main manufacturing industries are iron and steel production and copper smelting, commercial vehicles, chemicals, fertilizers, textiles, and optical instruments. Yunnan has trade contacts with more than 70 countries and regions in the world. Yunnan established the Meuse Border Trade Zone located in Ruli along its border with Burma. Yunnan mainly exports tobacco, machinery and electrical equipment, chemical and agricultural products, and non-ferrous metals. In 2008, its total two-way trade imports and exports reached $9.6 billion. The province signed foreign direct investment contracts involving $1.69 billion, of which $777 million were actually utilized during the year. Yunnan's unemployment rate at the end of 2008 was 4.21 percent. Yunnan's nominal GDP in 2011 was 875.1 billion yuan $138.92 billion, an annual growth rate of 13.7 percent. Its per capita GDP was 13,494 yuan $1,975. The share of GDP of Yunnan's primary, secondary, and tertiary industries was 17.9%, 43%, and 39.1% respectively. Yunnan is one of the major production bases of copper, lead, zinc, tin and aluminum in China. Gehiu is well known as the Kingdom of Zinc, with the reserves ranked first in the country. The Yingtze brand refined tin is one of the main products in Gehiu, which is registered on the London Metal Exchange LME. Besides, reserves of germanium, indium, zirconium, platinum, rock salt, sylvite, nickel, phosphate, mirability, arsenic and blue asbestos are also high. Significant copper deposits are found at Dongshuan, iron ore at Wuding, and coal at Shanwei and Kaiyuan. Economic policy to locate new industry in interior areas with substantial mineral wealth, led to major industrial development in Yunnan, especially in the Kunming area. The electricity industry is another important economic pillar of Yunnan, which plays a key role in the West-East Electricity Transmission Project. The electricity produced in Yunnan is mainly transported to Guangzhou. Topic economic and Technological Development Zones Kunming Economic and Technological Development Zone First established in 1992, Kunming Economic and Technology Development Zone is a national level zone approved by the State Council. Kunming is located in east-central Yunnan Province with preferential location. After several years' development, the zone has formed its pillar industries, which include tobacco processing, machinery manufacturing, electronic information, and biotechnology. The Kunming High-Tech Industrial Development Zone KMHNZ, is a state-level high-tech industrial zone established in 1992 in northwest Kunming. It is administratively under Kunming Prefecture. It has covers an area of 9 square kilometers, 3.5 square miles. KMHNZ is located in the northwest part of Kunming City, 4 kilometers from Kunming Railway Station, 5 kilometers from Kunming International Airport. Kunming Dianchi Tourism and Vacation Zone Kunming Airport Economic Zone Ruli Border Trade Economic Cooperation Zone Ruli Border Economic Cooperation Zone RLBECZ is a Chinese state council approved industrial park based in Ruli, Dihong Prefecture, founded in 1992 and was established to promote trade between China and Burma. 
The area's import and export trade include the processing industry, local agriculture and biological resources are very promising. Sino-Burmese business is growing fast. Burma is now one of Yunnan's biggest foreign trade partners. In 1999, Sino-Burmese trade accounted for 77.4% of Yunnan's foreign trade. In the same year, exports for electromechanical equipments came up to $55.28 million. Main exports here include fiber cloth, cotton yarn, saracen wax, mechanical equipments, fruits, rice seeds, fiber yarn and tobacco. Wanding Border Economic Cooperation Zone Wanding Border Economic Cooperation Zone WTBECZ is a Chinese state council approved industrial park based in Wanding Town, Ruli, Dihong, founded in 1992 and was established to promote trade between China and Burma. The zone spans 6 square kilometers, 2.3 square miles and is focuses on developing trading, processing, agriculture resources and tourism. Kujing Economic and Technological Development Zone Kujing Economic and Technological Development Zone QETDZ is a provincial development zone approved by Yunnan Provincial Government in August 1992. It is located in the east of urban Kujing, the second largest city in Yunnan in terms of economic strengths. The location of the development zone is the economic, political and cultural center of Kujing. As an agency under Kujing Municipal Party Committee and Municipal Government, the Administrative Commission of QETDZ functions as an economy supervising body at the prefecture level and an administration body at the county level. It has 106 square kilometers, 41 square miles under its jurisdiction. It shoulders the task of building a new 40 square kilometer city area and providing service for a population of 400,000 in the upcoming 10 years. Yushi Economic and Technological Development Zone Dali Economic and Technological Development Zone Chuzhong Economic and Technological Development Zone Chuzhong Economic Development Zone is an important zone in Yunnan. Now the zone has attracted a number of investment projects. It is an important industry for the development of new type industry platform. The zone covers an area of 12 square kilometers, 4.6 square miles, composed of four parks. Songming Yanglin Experimental Zone for County and Township Industries Heku Border Economic Cooperation Zone First established in 1992, Heku Border Economic Cooperation Zone is a border zone approved by state council to promote Sino-Vietnamese trade. It has a planned area of 4.02 square kilometers, 1.55 square miles. The zone implemented several policies to serve its clients in China from various industries and sectors including investment, trade, finance, taxation, immigration, etc. Jigao Border Trade Economic Zone Lijiang Yulong Snow Mountain Tourism Zone Kang Mountain and Erhai Lake Tourism and Vacation Zone at Dali Zishuang Banner Tourism and Vacation Zone Tengchong Tourism and Vacation Zone Yangzong High Lake Tourism and Vacation Zone Fujian Lake Tourism and Vacation Zone Topic <laughs> <laughs> Education Since the 1960s, improvements have been achieved in the overall educational level, which can be seen in the increase in average years of regular education received. The development of part-time schools have brought adult, distance and continuing education to farms, factories, offices, and other places. Evening, time off work, study leave classes allow people to receive education without leaving their jobs. Policies to upgrade adult education have begun to complement the campaign against illiteracy. A basic Chinese vocabulary in simplified strokes is taught to millions of illiterate people in short, intensive courses. Despite progress made, Yunnan's illiteracy rate remains one of the highest in China mainly due to insufficient education among minority peoples. In higher education, Yunnan has one national key university. 
Yunnan University in Kunming. There is also a growing number of technical schools, among which the most prominent are the Yunnan Normal University, the Southwest Forestry University, Yunnan Agricultural University, Yunnan Academy of Agricultural Sciences, Kunming Medical University, Yunnan University of Traditional Chinese Medicine, and Kunming University of Science and Technology. Other notable establishments of learning are the Kunming branch of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the Yunnan Astronomical Observatory, and the Yunnan Provincial Library. As of 2000, there were 24 institutions of higher learning in Yunnan, with an enrollment of over 90,400 students and a faculty of 9,237, 2,562 secondary schools with an enrollment of more than 2,137,400 students and 120,461 teachers, and 22,151 primary schools with an enrollment of 4,720,600 pupils and a faculty of 210,507. The gross enrollment rate of school age children was 99.02%. See also, List of universities and colleges in Yunnan <laughs> Health Yunnan Province is responsible for about 50% of officially reported malaria cases in China, it is presently considered to be the main source of plague in China. <laughs> <laughs> HIV AIDS HIV, AIDS in Yunnan Transport <laughs> <laughs> Topic. Railways The first railway in Yunnan was the narrow-gauge Yunnan-Vietnam Railway built by France from 1904 to 1910 to connect Kunming with Vietnam, then a French colony. In Yunnan, the Chinese section of this railway is known as the Yunnan-Heku Railway and the line gave Yunnan access to the seaport at Haiphong. During the Second World War, Britain and the United States began building a railway from Yunnan to Burma but abandoned the effort due to Japanese advance. Due in part to difficult terrain both locally and in surrounding provinces and the shortage of capital for rail construction, Yunnan remained outside of China's domestic rail network until 1966 when the Giyang Kunming Railway was completed. The line would not enter into operation until 1970, the same year that the Chengdu Kunming was completed. The Nanning Kunming Railway to Guangxi was completed in 1997, followed by the Nijiang Kunming Railway in 2001. The Panxi Railway, originally built in 1975 to draw coal from neighboring Gaizhou, was electrified in 2001 and adds to eastern Yunnan's outbound rail transport capacity. Within the province, the Kunming Yushi, opened in 1993, and the Guangtong Dali, opened in 1998, expanded the rail network to southern and western Yunnan, respectively. The Dali Lijiang Railway, opened in 2010, brought rail service to northwestern Yunnan. That line is planned to be extended further north to Zamgyinulhe County. The province is extending the railway network to neighboring countries in Southeast Asia. From Yuxi, the Yuxi Mengzi Railway, built from 2005 to 2013, and the Mengzi Heku Railway, under construction since 2008, will form a standard gauge railway connection with Vietnam. The Dali Ruli Railway, under construction since May 2011, will bring rail service to the border with Myanmar. Also under planning is a rail line from Yuxi to Mohan, in Zishuangbana Prefecture, on the border with Lao. This line could be extended further south to Thailand, Malaysia and Singapore. Topic. Burma Road 
The Burma Road was a highway extending about 1,100 kilometers (680 miles) through mountainous terrain from Lashio, northeast Burma, northeastward to Kunming, China. Undertaken by the Chinese after the start of the Sino-Japanese War in 1937 and completed in 1938, it was a vital transportation route for wartime supplies to the Chinese government from Rangoon and shipped by railroad to Lashio from 1938 to 1946. An extension runs east through China from Kunming, then north to Chongqing. This traffic increased in importance to China after the Japanese took effective control of the Chinese coast and of Indochina. It was seized by the Japanese in 1942 and reopened when it was connected to the Stillwell Road from India. The Ledo Road, later called the Stillwell Road from Ledo, India, into Burma was begun in December 1942. In 1944 the Ledo Road reached Mayakayana and was joined to the Burma Road. Both roads have lost their former importance and are in a state of disrepair. The Burma Road's importance diminished after World War II, but it has remained a link in a 3,400 km road system from Yangon, Burma, to Chongqing. Highways. <laughs> <laughs> Road construction in Yunnan continues unabated. Over the last years, the province has added more new roads than any other province. Today, expressways link Kunming through Dali to Baoshan, Kunming to Mojang on the way to Jinghong, Kunming to Kujing, Kunming to Shilin, Stone Forest. The official plan is to connect all major towns and neighboring capitals with expressways by 2010, and to complete a high-speed road network by 2020. All county towns are now accessible by paved, all-weather roads from Kunming, all townships have a road connection the last to be connected was Yangla, in the far north, but Jilongjiang remains cut off for about six months every year, and about half of all villages have road access. Second-level national highways stretch 958 kilometers (595 miles). Third-level highways 7,571 kilometers (4,704 miles) and fourth-level highways 52,248 kilometers (32,465 miles). The province has formed a network of communication lines radiating from Kunming to Sichuan and Gaijou provinces and Guangxi and Tibet autonomous regions, and further on to Burma, Laos, Vietnam and Thailand. National highways running through Yunnan province are China National Highway 108 China National Highway 213 China National Highway 214 China National Highway 320 China National Highway 323 China National Highway 324 China National Highway 326 Topic Expressways After the opening of the Suolongzi to Pingyuanji Expressway, Luofu Expressway, the first between Yunnan and Guangxi Province, opened in October 2007. It has made material and passenger transportation between the two provinces much more convenient. Moreover, Luofu Expressway has also become the main road from Yunnan to Guangxi and the coastal ports. Luofu Expressway begins from the crossroads of Luo Village between Yunnan and Guangxi provinces and ends at Funing County of Wenshan State. The total length of the expressway is 79.3 km which has shortened the commute between Yunnan and Guangxi from the previous three and a half hours to just 50 minutes. Expressways running through Yunnan province are Kunming Bangkok Expressway G5611 Dali Expressway from Dali to Lijiang G78 Shenkan Expressway from Shantou to Kunming G80 Guangkan Expressway from Guangzhou to Kunming G8011 Kaiha Expressway from Kaiyuan to Heku on the Vietnamese border Topic. Waterways 
Generally, rivers are obstacles to transport in Yunnan. Only very small parts of Yunnan's river systems are navigable. However, China is constructing a series of dams on the Mekong to develop it as a waterway and source of power. The first was completed at Manwen in 1993. In 1995, the province put an investment of 171 million yuan to add another 807 kilometers (501 miles) of navigation lines. It built two wharfs with an annual handling capacity of 300,000 to 400,000 tons each and four wharfs with an annual handling capacity of 100,000 tons each. The annual volume of goods transported was 2 million tons and that of passengers transported, 2 million. <laughs> Airports The province has 20 domestic air routes from Kunming to Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Chengdu, Haikou, Chongqing, Shenyang, Harbin, Wuhan, Xi'an, Lanzhou, Hangzhou, Xiamen, Nanning, Shenzhen, Guiyang, Changsha, Guilin, Lhasa and Hong Kong, 10 provincial air routes from Kunming to Jinghong, Mangxi, Linking, Tengchong, Lijiang, Dali, Zamginyilha, Zhaotong, Baoshan and Simao, and 10 international air routes from Kunming Kunming to Bangkok, Kolkata, Chiang Mai, Yangon, Singapore, Seoul, Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh City, Kuala Lumpur and Vientiane. Replacing Kunming Wujiaba International Airport is Kunming Changshui International Airport, which opened June 28, 2012. <laughs> Bridges Bridge building in Yunnan date back at least 1,300 years when the Tibetan Empire built an iron chain bridge over the Yangtze to the neighboring Nanjiao Kingdom at what is today Waishi Lisu Autonomous County during the Tang Dynasty. Iron chain bridges are still found across high river valleys of Yunnan. The Jinlong Bridge on the Jinsha River in Lijiang remains the oldest bridge over the Yangtze. With the expansion of the highway and railway network in Yunnan, numerous large-scale bridges have been built across the region's myriad of rivers, including the Yangtze which has dozens of crossings in Yunnan. Metro Kunming is the only city in Yunnan that has a metro system. As of October 2018, it has four lines in operation. Culture Yunnan's cultural life is one of remarkable diversity. Archaeological findings have unearthed sacred burial structures holding elegant bronzes in Jinning, south of Kunming. In Zhaotong in northeastern Yunnan, there has been discovered, frescoes of the Jin dynasty 265 Many Chinese cultural relics have been discovered in later periods. The lineage of tribal way of life of the indigenous peoples persisted uninfluenced by modernity until the mid-20th century. Tribal traditions, such as Yi slaveholding and Wa headhunting, have since been abolished. After the Cultural Revolution 1966 when many minority culture and religious practices were suppressed, Yunnan has come to celebrate its cultural diversity and subsequently many local customs and festivals have flourished. <laughs> 18 oddities of Yunnan Topic Cuisine Topic Tea Yunnan has several different tea growing regions. One of Yunnan's best known products is Pu Erh tea or Pua, named after the old tea trading town of Pu Erh Pua. The province is also known for its Yunnan gold and other Dianhong teas, developed in the 20th century. Topic: Music. Topic: 
Chinese medicine Yunnan is host to 15,000 species of plants, including 60% of the plants used in traditional Chinese medicine. Yunnan Baiyao Tourism Yunnan Province, due to its landscapes, mild climate and cultural diversity, is one of China's major tourist destinations. Most visitors are Chinese tourists, although trips to Yunnan are organized by an increasing number of foreign travel agencies as well. Mainland tourists travel by the masses. 2.75 million Chinese visited Yunnan last October during national holiday. Also, a different trend is slowly developing small scale and environmentally friendly ecotourism. At the moment, projects in this field are often being set up with help of NGOs. In 2004, tourism revenues amounted to 37 billion RMB, and thus accounting for 12.6% of the provincial GDP. Another fact indicating the importance of tourism in Yunnan Province is capital Kunming hosting the China International Travel Mart every two years. This tourism trade fair is the largest of its kind in Asia and serves as an important platform for professionals in the sector. More than 80 countries and regions were present during the 2005 edition. Tourism is expected to grow further. In 2010, the province welcomed over 2.3 million overseas tourists and the Yunnan Provincial Tourism Bureau aims to draw 4.3 million overseas arrivals under the 12th Five-Year Tourism Development Plan. Kunming City is expected to add 11 new mid to high end hotels with an inventory of under 4,000 rooms between 2012 and 2016. The Nature Conservancy and the Chinese government came together to form a partnership and explore the possibility of bringing adventure tourism onto the rivers of southwest China. A two month white water expedition explored from the Mekong River's Moon Gorge to Yang's River's Great Bend. The expedition provided valuable information to the partnership, encouraging them to take into account the safety, culture, economics, and conservation of the Yunnan province. Creating an adventure tourism sector would bring valuable economic resources to the economically struggling population, who had once relied on logging as income prior to it being banned due to deforestation. Tourist centers in Yunnan include Dali, the historic center of the Nanjiao and Dali kingdoms. Chuzhong, the first stop on the way to Dali and Lijiang. Home of the Yi ethnic minority and their respective ancient town. Jinghong, the center and prefectural capital of the Zishuang Banner Dai minority autonomous prefecture. Lijiang, a Nashi minority city. It has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1997. Zamginyilha County also known as Shangri-La and formerly Zhongdian, an ethnic Tibetan township and county set high in Yunnan's northwestern mountains. Shilin Stone Forest, a series of cast outcrops east of Kunming. Yuanyang, a Hani minority settlement with vast rice terraced mountains. Zishuangbanna, a national scenic resort, noted for its natural and cultural attractions. Topic places of interest Black Dragon Pool Baishutai Kangshan Erhai Lake Ganlan Basin Green Lake Park Jade Dragon Snow Mountain Lanking River Mekong River Manting Park Chunwan Park in Jinghong Miley Snow Mountain in Dakin Pukian Temple Sanchehi Nature Reserve in Jinghong Shaping Market Dali Shashi Stone Forest Three Pagodas Tengchong Hot Springs Tiger Leaping Gorge Visitor Center for Nature and Culture in Northwest Yunnan Ways Markets near Dali Ali Zishuang Banner Tropical Flower and Plant Garden Yuantong Temple Yunnan Provincial Museum Sport Professional sporting teams in Yunnan have included the now defunct Yunnan Bulls in the Chinese Basketball Association and Yunnan Hongta in the Chinese GRA League. The Yunnan Lijiang Dongba football team currently competes in China League 2. See also China portal <laughs>